Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. I'm Sean with Manly Made Minute. So happy you are here today. Uh, today we are going to make one, maybe two, have not decided. I've gotten stuff ready for it, but we will see. I know probably once I get started we're going to be like, let's just make two and, and go for it. But we're going to make this iris card um, that I just posted recently for Anthony's Paper Craft. Um, we made some cards for his new displays for his trade shows. Um, I think I sent him roughly 40. The other design teamers sent him a ton. Um, and I posted this and we've gotten some inquiries on what was the technique behind this card. So we're going to show you. Um, this is his iris stamp. Um, with his circle stencil. I added some other stencils on there, layered it up. Um, I wanted to go three-dimensional on this one, so we've got tons of, I don't know if the camera's gonna pick it up, but three different layers of leaves and the iris on there. Um, so we're gonna recreate this card. Possibly, I'm thinking we might do the re reverse of this. We'll see once I get started. So. Hopefully you have some time to stick around today and see how we make these cards. So stick around and we'll get started. All right, we will get started. So I have the products that I'm going to use, and um, like I said in the intro, um, we're going to work with Anthony's Paper uh, Craft uh, products today, um, and this was just from that card um, that I had made for his um, new displays and things for his shows. So um, what I'm using today, two products from him, is I'm using the Iris Stamp, um, and so if I take the cover off, Really detailed stamp. We're going to color this and fussy cut that out. Then I'm using his um, Stamp Through Double Trouble Circle stamp. So there is the positive and negative of this circle. Um, I used um, this one here on the card that I made for him, um, but I'm going to try and use this one today too. Um, and we're going to do kind of the opposite of, of each just to see how that turns out. Then um, some of the background stenciling, I used um, some generic stencils. I got these off of Amazon. Um, so we're going to use this one with this leaf and branch. And then on our negative, um, using this one, I'm going to use this one with the branch um, and see what we get. So let's get started. I want to do um, the circle first, then we'll stamp the iris, fussy cut that out, and, and color that. And then today I'm using, for my first card, we're going to use, um, I'm using Catherine Pooler ink. And so we're going to use the um, chiffon for the yellow background and then the double layer with the stencil. On the iris, we're going to use um, just a little bit of the flirty fuchsia, but I'm going to use the grape crush. And then for the middle, I'm just using a yellow um, colored pencil just to do the little stamen thing in the middle. So that's going to be the first card. Then the second card, and then on the leaves, we're going to use Catherine Pooler Martini, Deck the Halls, and Lime Ricky. And then on my background and on my um, flower, on the second one, we're going to use the sparkling berry. So let's get started. Um, today I put my Tim Holtz Tonic Studios glass mat down uh, because I want to just talk about. I'm going to do um, a manly moment on Monday moment on this, but. I don't have any sticky mats that I use to put my stencils down and things, so I use my grid on here and just tape things down. So I just kind of wanted to show you what I do. Um, so typically I would take my, um, my card base. So I'm using this for my card base. Today I'm using uh, five, and, five inches by three and three quarters. Um, then I just usually take a little blue painter's tape and I stick it to the back. And I, if I'm doing multiple cards where I need this to be the same, I usually will put it in the same spot. So I'll line this up in the corner of my grid mat, like so. Then I place my stencil where I want it to be. Now I'm gonna probably add a greeting to this, so rather than being center, I'm gonna go 
up towards the top, so I leave space for a greeting here at the bottom. And then I just line this up so that it's square, so that I have this the same for each card after I place this. And I'm gonna use this as a little hinge, more blue painter's tape, and tape this at the top. Once I get that centered, I tape that down really good. Now I have a little hinged door that I can just keep placing cards in the same spot, hinge this down, do this. If I'm only doing one or two, um, just to make sure that this stays down nice and tight, and I've done this with the hinge door as well sometimes if I've got a really detailed stencil that I need this to stay down tight, I will tape down my edges so that it stays nice and flat. Because as we know, you know, when we stencil, sometimes a brush will lift up those edges. And so I'll kind of keep this nice and flat and tape that down, okay? Now I have a little a little spot here. I have a little edge here that's showing on my card and I just don't wanna over, um, over color on that. So I'm just gonna place a couple sticky notes over top of that so I just don't, I tend to get a little messy. <laughs> so I don't wanna get a little color on there. Just gonna mask that off with some sticky notes. All right, so let's start with the first, first sample and I'm gonna use, um, the chiffon for the background on this. We're just going to um, color blend some yellow, then I'm going to double color blend and overlay my stencil so I get my pattern on the back. Super easy, nothing too complicated. So we'll color blend this out. And I'm not sure how, how juicy my, my uh, stamps are, so I'll tap off a little bit just to make sure. I start with a really soft hand, like really soft, because I don't want this super, super, super heavy. So I'm just doing a little light base and I'll just keep layering up. And sometimes it's hard to see if you're even putting color down on these sometimes with the stencil covering it. Um, so that's where this hinge works because you can always lift and check and see, oh yeah, yeah, I'm getting color. Again, very. I'm not even pushing down. I'm just letting that brush do the work for me because I don't want to load this up too, too heavy. And I just want a nice, smooth layer on this. The nice thing about Catherine's inks is um, it does smooth out. As this dries, if you get some little heavy spots or something, it, it will smooth out. And you know the, the good thing about her colors too is that they they tend to brighten up. They they tend to just look really nice and even once they dry, and that's what I like about it. So, um, how I came up with this card, you know, when I'm working with Anthony's paper craft, um, just looking at trying to look at his stamps in kind of a different light, and and you know he's got some really detailed stamps and intricate stamps, but at the same time I'm just trying to look at some of these stamps on how can we put these in a different light and add some dimension, add some texture to them, brighten them up, make them fun to use um, versus, you know, a lot of them are more um, stamp and color in and do those types of things with. And so I'm trying to break these stamps down um, into layers and how can I make that work on a card? And that's how I just came up with this on, on um, layering this flower up. I'm going to be really honest. Like, when I first started doing uh, cards, um, I was watching people fussy cut and I was like, oh, heck no. Like, I like fussy cutting literally makes my eyes cross and my fingernails hurt. Like, I just was like, I can't do it. Nope. I'd rather like buy the dye to cut something out and, you know, make it make it work that way. Um, I'll, uh, but I'm not going to lie. Like, the more I'm doing it... Um, I'm actually, I don't mind it, you know, and the more you do it, you kind of learn how to make fussy cutting easier. Um, you know, I'll talk about that when I start cutting a little bit with, with this flower, but I actually don't mind it. It's, it, it can be a little relaxing if you just own, <laughs> little technically own it. Like, okay, I got to do this. I got to make this work. And how can I make this work? And it, it, it actually isn't too bad. This iris flower is actually really easy to cut out. Um, it looks a little bit more detailed than, than you, th than you think when you go to cut it, you're like, oh my gosh, there's so many int intricate lines, but it's actually not bad. Okay. I think I have a nice, good 
kind of even layer on here. You know, it's it's a little uneven in spots, but I'm okay with that because this is that'll blend in, that'll flatten out um, with um, as this dries, right? So, but and it's gonna mask a little bit once, and I'm just going around the edge because I want a little heavy edge to define this circle when we take this stencil off. Okay, now before you take your stencil off, now you're gonna take your second background textured stencil. Again, use whatever you want for this, um, for, for your background, um, stars or whatever, you know, any pattern you want. I found a wavy pattern I almost used because I thought that looked kind of cool with like water and things for summer, but um, I went a little bit more kind of fancy with this one. So all you're gonna do is lay this one down. I'm not even gonna tape this one down because I'm not gonna um, have it down for very long. Um, <clears throat> just lay this down. You can use what you have or reload if you need a little bit more. Now I'm going to use a little heavier hand because now I want these to darken up. So this is a color on color or tone on tone kind of look. So now I'm using a heavier hand just to get that color down. Because now I want this portion to pop off that yellow background. And can be hard to tell. So if you need to lift it up, do you have enough? Um, I'm, yeah, I'm almost there. And if you want, you don't have to fill this whole thing. Do a little in the center and blend it out so it's heavier in the center and blend it out. Uh, whatever your creative freedom feels like doing that day. All right, I am really happy with that. So now you can see I've got my tone on tone, right? Super easy. Now I'm going to lift this up because I want my greenery to overlay that whole card. Okay, so now I'm going to take this up. And I'm going to probably keep my card taped down. And what I'm going to do, because I'm going to do my greenery before I move on, I'm just going to keep this hinged. I'm going to tape, tape this back because I'm going to use this for the second card. Um, possibly. No, no, I'm not. So we're going to remove that. All right. So there's my little piece of my background. Now I'm gonna take my greenery. I chose this greenery because it kind of wraps in, in like tucks around and I want that to kind of hug my circle um, as much as possible. So I'm gonna kind of rearrange this so I get the hug kind of that I want. Um, I want a little bit to go off the top side and the bottom just a little bit. And I'm happy with that. Now I do the same exact thing. I take my painter's tape and I just tape this down. Again, this is just by default of, I don't have any um, sticky stencil mats and things. Um, I will over time, I'll invest in that stuff. I just don't have it now. Um, I'm, I'm semi-limited on supplies and I'm getting there and I'm okay with that because you know what? I make it work. And that's the biggest thing It's just make it work for you and that's the way it goes. Again, I'm gonna cover these edges up because I got a little bit of that card showing and I don't wanna over blend. All right, now what I've kind of discovered when I do leaves and branches and things, um, the rule of three seems to work the best. Um, so I'm gonna do three colors. I work lightest to darkest. Uh, by the time I get to the darkest, I'm usually just doing it in little spots to accent. So I'm gonna, I'm working with um, Martini, Lime Ricky, and Deck the Halls from Catherine Pooler. Okay, I'm gonna start with Martini because Lime Ricky tends to get really vibrant and, and can overpower. So I'm gonna start with Martini, then Lime Ricky, then Deck the Halls. So what I do, and I probably have some left on this brush, um, is I kind of go over the whole thing. Um, and sometimes I'll take yellow first on branches and leaves, then build up from that to give it a little like, it's like the sun shining off it. I'm not gonna do that because my background's yellow. That's that's the only reason why now I'm starting with a lighter green. So I'm gonna start with my martini, okay? I load off onto my glass mat because then I pick up from this as I need more, okay? Because I don't want, I'm not gonna be heavy handed here either. I just wanna build my greens up on this, so. I am using a little pressure, more than what I was when I was using that, that yellow background. And I just pick up my color as I need it and throw that green in there. 
and you can hinge this open to see what you have if you need to. Um, by all means, that's, you know, the purpose of, of having a little hinge here. I'm going to peel that back because I got over the edge there. Okay, so that's my first layer of that martini. Okay, now I'm going to switch into my Lime Ricky. I'm just cleaning off my brush here because I know I got some darker colors on this one from my last card. All right. And you can see that is super bright. So I load this one off quite a bit. That's probably plenty for, for, for what I need. Now I'm going to go through, lightly do the branches, kind of spot around these, these leaves, then fill in that rest with, with the dark, all right? So lightly on these branches. It's almost like I'm trying to get like one edge of the branch almost. And then just go through. Primarily I'm going kind of over the tips of the leaves um, with this one because I'm going to do the base of the leaves with my uh, Deck the Halls. And again, I'm and there's no rhyme or reason. I just, this is how I do it um, by all means. Just spot color, a little here, a little there, a little here, a little there. I Once you peel this off, it's going to look great. So spot color it if you want to, no rhyme or reason. All right, I think I'm happy with that. Now let's go to our um, darkest, which is my Deck the Halls. All right, Deck the Halls. Just getting the color kind of on the on the very tip of the brush, because that's what I'm gonna use, um, and just go through, I'm light-handed here now because I don't wanna really throw a bunch of color on, and I'm just trying to get around the bases. Kind of, I kind of do the centers of those leaves so it looks like it's coming from the centers. And then I'm just lightly go tracing around those branches so I get some dimension of dark and lights going around the branches. The thing I like about the stencils is it's kind of like, it's like super playtime. It's so easy because things are masked off for you. Um, I tend to be messy sometimes um, and it's not, I, it's just because I get creative and I get fun and I get going and then I'm not watching what I'm doing. Um, and I try to slow down, but then I, you know, again, it's it's easy to get messy, right? By the time you get stuff on your fingers and touch something. That's what I like about stencils too, is that it's like, it masks things off for me. Um, all right. I am happy with that. Before I do anything, I just learn by default. Um, I'm going just to take and clean my glass mat. I'm just using a little rubbing alcohol and wiping that off so that I don't get anything else on it. All right, let's peel this little baby back and see what we have. Oh, I love it. Okay, super nice, I love that. So there is my first background. We'll call it, we'll fussy cut that iris out, throw that iris on there, probably a little greeting down there at the bottom and, and then layer this up. Before I move on to the iris, while we're doing this, I think I'm gonna do it, we're gonna do the second one to try. I'll be honest, I have not tried this off camera. I just thought it was, as I was unpacking and getting ready to film, I'm like I could do the positive and the negative of this stencil from Anthony's Paper Craft. I wonder if that'll work. So I went and grabbed an extra stencil just in case I decided to do this. So we're gonna do the opposite of this, okay? So before I put this stuff away and we do the, the iris, let's do that. So I'm gonna do the opposite of this. So I'm doing the same thing. Um, I'm gonna remove this one, cause that'll come back. I'm gonna, again, painter's tape. I tape in this heavy, you know, the heavy lines here. I always use that in the corner. Do I use this to measure? Um, sometimes, because the measurements around the edges, um, sometimes, and sometimes I don't, and I'm just going by the squares and lining up in the corners. Um, you know, I'm gonna use that as a Monday moment coming up, but uh, <coughs> I think we tend to forget about the tools that we have. Um, 
rather than investing in other, other rulers and things we have, right, if you have a mat and you have this grid, you have a ruler, right? Um, I have a lining up grid. Um, so I use this as my lining up grid. All right, so we're not gonna use this one this time. I'm gonna use the, the opposite of this. We're gonna use this inner, inner, inner circle, okay? And let me grab, because that painter's tape tends to rip. I'm gonna grab some washi, we'll just use some washi tape um, and tape this down. And I'm going to do same concept is, is my thought process behind this. So I'm going to go up off center towards the top, leave space down for a greeting if I want to put a greeting on here, kind of centering it so I have a, the same amount overlapping the edges. I could have done a bigger base so that whole circle fit in there. I didn't care if this went off the edge. I don't, I, I didn't care if, you know, if it wasn't all on the page. Um, I thought that was okay because I was running the leaves off and stuff anyway, so it didn't matter to me. Um, so I did the five inch by three and three quarter um, for this. All right, we'll stick that right there. I'm gonna put another piece of tape underneath there just to make sure. I'm gonna probably have to hold this one down a little bit more um, because I don't have, uh, you know what I can do is I can tape across, I'm gonna do that. Um, I can tape across where this goes off the edge um, to hold that down just a little bit better. Just like so. All right, see, be creative, right? Be creative. All right, okay, so I think, um, what did I grab for this one? Um, blue, we're gonna do the blue with the pink flower on this one. Um, all right, let me rearrange here. Um, so I'm using Catherine Pooler Fiesta Blue. I'm gonna go around the edges. I'm gonna use my other stencil for the middle section but I'm going to blend it off this time um, just to have a little more blend So, because I still want to get some tone on tone. Um, and if I don't do the middle, I'm not going to have the tone on tone, but I'll get the tone on tone on the opposite outside edge. Okay, let's, uh, let's try this. I'm going to use soft hand. Now, you know how we normally, like on this one, I start on the outside work in because I can blend off this edge. I'm going to start on the inside edge and go out because this is my working surface where I can pull from, right? Um, really light hand. I, I did load up with a little more ink. I want the edge to be kind of more prominent. So I'm working that edge just a little bit first as I come around. You can see I had a little more ink at the top, so it's, you know, but just keep working this. You know, the nice thing about these inks too is that they layer. The more you work and, and add little bits and pieces, little by little, it'll layer. It'll it'll darken, it'll get there, just be patient. Um, I tend again, like, you know, I get messy and I get heavy handed. Um, and this is something I'm trying to work on actually with some of my stuff is just not to be so heavy handed and try to get it done in one full swoop. Um, patience is generally not my virtue and I'm working on that. I am trying. All right. Now I see that I have a nice little glow around that edge. I'm going to work that out. Um, just a little bit now past the edge. So now I'm going to come out a little farther with my, br with my brush and work that out so I soften that out because I just want this to glow. It was kind of my my thought process behind that of just doing this this opposite, you know, inside circle, outside circle thing. Because, it, you know, what I'm done here, I want enough ink on this outside edge that when I overlay the other stencil, I'm going to get my tone on tone. What did I get in this? I'm like, it's going to almost look like a sun with a blue, blue hue or something. Could have, should have did the yellow on this so it looks like a sun. All right. I think I'm happy with this. Just soften that out just a little bit more. Yeah, I like that. Like, 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 I like, I like, I like, I like. Get that top edge. All right, uh, all right, let's peel this back because now we're gonna do, um, this would have been as if I did now my second one and went over it, but I wanna get this design in the middle at the same time. So I'm gonna peel this back. 
I'm not gonna reload my ink at first because I wanna just use what I have. Um, be careful when you peel these off, especially depending on the tape you're using. And you know, sometimes um, those low adhesive tapes and stuff, I was using washi tape. My washi tape's a little old, so it tends to be a little sticky. All right, now I'm going to overlay this. And because of my square, I wanna make be careful of those edges. So I'm going to kind of, I want the, these stripes to be a little bit at an angle versus just so squared up like this. So I'm gonna angle this out. Now I'm gonna to have to use a soft hand to do this so I don't get this edge in there. Um, and I'm gonna tape this down. And I'm gonna tape this, uh, to line that like so. And you gotta watch just to not get over the edge of your card with, with this stuff too, right? And I'm gonna tape these down just to keep it tight because this one's a little more intricate cut. So I'm gonna tape both sides down. Just tack them down. Like so. This one again, I'm not lining this up to my grid just because I wanted this diagonal. All right, I'm not gonna reload yet because I wanna use what I have. Um, this doesn't need to be, I don't want this heavy. I don't want a solid, too solid in here. I just want this nice and soft with tone on tone. So I'm gonna start in my middle and I'm just gonna use the ink that I have. And as I see that ink build, I just get my circle bigger and bigger and just start working it out. Because I will build that color in the middle the more I go over, which is why I want this kind of darker in the middle, softer to the edges. Now, as I get tone on tone, I'm gonna put some pressure so that I get that good and colored and that shows that tone on tone. Being careful not to get that square edge in there If you do, you do. I mean, especially down here, um, you know, probably good that I put it down here because I can always cover that with a greeting anyway. That's the other thing I've learned. Um, I'm gonna load up just a tiny bit. Um, you know you, how we make mistakes part way through a card and then you just wanna start over? I don't, honestly, I don't. Cause I'm like, I can, I can either cover it with bling and sequence and dots and I can cover it with a greeting. I can add something to it and just, you know, does my concept have to change possibly from when I started? Sure, but who cares? Um, I just cover it up. Um, all right, I'm gonna take a peek. Oh, I like, oh, I like that. Okay, I'm good with that. I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. Oh, I love, it looks like wallpaper. Um, I don't know if I've used this stencil before. I got this one in a big pack from Amazon. It came with a whole bunch of background stuff. I don't know if I've used that one before. Um, I like it, I like it. All right. All right, there's my second background. Oh, I shouldn't have taken that off yet. That's all right. I'm gonna lay this back down. We're gonna do the leaves before I move on because then the backgrounds are done. I'm gonna wipe this down so that my colors don't smush into what, um, what I'm doing. So I'm just using, again, a little bit of alcohol rub that off make sure it's good and dry before you lay this back down on your card especially Catherine Pooler inks um, are reactive to water um, or liquid so you don't want this to to smear and to spot your your design so that's alcohol works nice for stencils because it dries quick I just have mine in an old spray bottle or a hairspray bottle all right let's now lay this down I want to do the same thing I want this to kind of wrap my circle um, so probably almost about the same kind of spot that I had the other one. Edges are um, laying off the bottom, the top, and the side a little bit. And we're going to go there. Move my tape here because it's just up on the card a little higher. All right. Done with Catherine Pooler Fiesta Blue. Uh, we are done with the Catherine Pooler chiffon. We're gonna use the greens again. And I'm gonna start with my martini, go to my lime ricky, then go to my deck the halls, all right? Martini, now this is the one where I do all of the leaves. I'm gonna go um, a little heavier here because I don't have any yellow. Um, so I'm gonna go a little heavier. 
Um, and this lime or martini is a little yellow in it, so I'm not gonna um, put my yellow down like I normally would for the first color. So I'm gonna go a little heavier handed this time with my lime Rick or my uh, martini. Just because I'm starting with a white background in the middle. So I need a little more base on there. How many of you, feel free to comment in the comments, um, use stencils? Or how many of you like have stencils and don't get them out very often? Um, I've got a fair amount of stash and I try, I'm trying to like, that's the one thing I kind of sometimes forget I have too, that I don't need to layer and cut things out and dimensionals all the time. It's okay just to do ink and some stencils and throw in a greeting and throw in a flower and, you know, or just stamp the flower. I could stamp the iris directly to this and call it a day and color it in or watercolor it. Um, you know, we, I think sometimes we get so in, ingrained in trying to do the dimensionals and everything else. And then um, to me, I, I'll be like, to me, this is the simplicity part of it, I feel like, um, which makes card making fun sometimes because it's really a no brainer. I don't have to think about it a whole lot. Um, it's easy, it's fun, it's creative. Um, and I think sometimes we tend to forget these little simple things can still be fun. All right, this is the Lime Ricky. Now I'm going in here, I'm touching those the tips of the leaves to get that on there. Then I'm just kind of going randomly over and throwing this on because I'll go use that dark on the the base of everything here. I tap over here to pick up more ink. Um, so I th when I th throw here, I tap it down to load it off, and then I use this as my little load up section. I don't know if you have it last mat. This was my first mat. Um, I just you know decided to go the big bucks and spend on the. Tim Holtz glass one, I love it. I really, really like it. Um, I will say, um, I need to find something to cut on. The other night I was cutting out some uh, other flowers with the X-Acto knife and I started on this and I was like, oh, criminy. So I got little cuts on it. Um, oh well, it's looking to be used and used and I guess that's what it's for, but I gotta find something to cut on because shouldn't probably be cutting on this. It's not diamonds and it cuts like glass. Um, okay. Last one, deck the halls. Now I'm gonna go here at the bases of stuff and just lightly, cause this is pretty hefty color, random over the um, branches, get some dimension on that, base of those leaves and then work that out. Again, like I'm not even really thinking, I'm just kinda like, ah, oh, yeah, maybe a little color there, leaves a little dark there, um, the fun thing about these. Um, <clears throat> I will say, I was online last night looking at, because I knew I was going to do this stenciling video, and I'm like, I need more stencils. I have yet to do any layering stencils, like flower layering, and I love the way they look. There's been some new releases lately. I know Alta New just re has some that, uh, that are amazing. Um, so I, I'm going to invest in some layering stencils, I think, especially some flowers. I love doing flowers. Um, and... Um, I love them. I just think like, and they, they're easy and they're like, it looks like you did a lot to it. So, um, and that was just cause I was like, oh, I'm going to do the stenciling thing tomorrow. And then I'm like, oh, I need to look for some layering stencils. I don't have any layering stencils. Anyway. Okay. I'm done with my greenery. Let's take a peek. Oh, uh, that looks so springy and it looks like this looks like it's, um, old wallpaper in like a vintage house or something. Um, I, oh, I got a little green there, but that's okay. Um, I might even just sliver that off. Um, I forgot to cover my edge here with my my sticky, but again, mistake, uh, and I'm not gonna stop because of it. Um, okay, what do you think? I like this one. That flower is gonna pop off of that with that white like that. Um, so kind of cool. Um, and this is the circle um, stencil from Anthony's Paper Craft. Um, just from Double Trouble Stamp Through section, uh, circle stamp. Okay, let's go to the um, iris stamp because really that's all that's left of this card. So we're gonna use this iris, we'll stamp it. Um, I am, because we're just gonna be using some ink, I'm using our arch archival black. Um, I'm gonna stamp this twice for now. If I make a mistake, we'll have to do it again. <clears throat> 
I lost my magnet somewhere here cleaning my craft room last night, so I got to find a magnet. Um, it's either in the garbage or on the floor somewhere, under my cupboards probably. So anyway, um, yeah, I'd love to hear if any of you are using your stencils, have stencils, like stencils. Um, you know, maybe I'd if you have some pictures, post me some pictures of, of um, stuff you've done with stencils, you know. Um, what's your favorite stencil? Um, I just don't get mine out enough. And I have plenty of them to use. I've got lots of background stuff. Um, I tend to like backgrounds. Um, I tend to work backgrounds. I almost use my background and work forward on a card, knowing what I want the end card to, the, my end phase of the card. So for example, this is my end phase. I know what I want to do with this. I wanted to fussy cut it, color it, and I wanted different layers of the leaves and the iris to pop. But what's my background? So I tend to work background up on a card. Um, I don't know how you guys, if you have an overall picture and then you just start, um, I tend to think what's my top layer and then I need to work from the bottom up to get my top layer to pop of what I needed to do. Um, that's just my thought process. Um, I don't put a lot of thought into it. It's just that's how I think. Um, I did start sketching um, cards lately. I've seen... I need to start sketching because of like all these ideas that pop into my head. And um, all right, here's the iris stamp. You can see really good detail on these stamps. Um, he, his stamps are very detailed. The thing I like about these, especially when coloring, especially if you're a beginner stamper and color person, um, key to coloring, especially stamps like this, you can see the little shadows and the little like the heavy spots and things, use that as your highlight and, and low light, okay? So where the dark spots are, that should be the shadow, the dark spot, and then you blend that into the light spots. That's how I'm gonna color this, but we're gonna color this with brushes, um, is working dark to, you know, that light and then dark shadows working in, so I have a lighter middle, that's it. Same here, darker down here, darker on this edge, use that as your dark and lighten so the sun's kind of coming this way, you know, in the, in the stamp kind of thing. Um, use these to practice your shadowing and use your dark to lights. Um, that's how I did many of his cards I just sent for, for his new show. So, um, and, and it works great. All right, we're gonna do this, stamp this little puppy one more time because we decided to do two cards. So we're gonna do two cards. I probably won't make you sit and watch my fussy cutting. I'll probably fussy cut this, start fussy cutting, and then fussy cut off camera and come back because um, I think we all know fussy cutting. I just wanted to show one little thing I have learned with my fussy cutting because I hated it at first and I wasn't good at it at first. Still not the best at it. So, yeah. I also would like to know um, anybody doing flowers. Like... Any tips and tricks you have for flowers? I'm just really getting into flowers lately and, and Googling them to see what they look like and what to do with them. Um, all right, here is your two stamps we're gonna do for this card. We're gonna fussy cut these out, let this dry just a tiny bit, um, and I will be right back. Okay, we are back. I uh, have fussy cut everything out. Um, when you're done fussy cutting this iris, you're gonna have three pieces. So you're gonna have your iris, two leaves, and your middle stem with the bud on it. I um, left this iris to cut out because I wanted to point out a couple things that I've just learned uh, fussy cutting. Um, you know, I, I use the Fisker, Fisker's um, non-stick little fussy cutting scissors. Um, put them where the white is so you can see them. They are spring-loaded, so they're super easy um, to use. The thing that I've learned uh, with fussy cutting is cut in this bottom groove. The more I work out towards the tip and start cutting out here, you lose control. So if I'm starting, if I'm trying to fussy cut out here and doing this, you're going to lose control this way. You're going to lose control of pressure and end up snipping stuff that you don't want. The more you cut down in here, um, the more control you have, the more you can kind of get in there and, and wiggle around little fine detail stuff. The downside to this is you feel like you're, you're readjusting and moving down and moving down and moving it, keep moving in. 
Um, but trust me, your cutting will get better by doing so. So it's a little extra quote unquote work because we got to keep moving the scissors in versus just making like, for example, um, if I just make one cut, that seems like less work than doing this, moving and keep moving in, right? So just let me show you. So I get right into that groove. Now this one has a lot of little details that I try to work into this fussy cut. And I'll zoom in here um, too. Uh, that the more I stay in that groove, and now I'm starting to work out. So I'll reopen and get back in that groove. And I'm also using this as my pivot, right? So I'm moving this versus my shear a lot too. I still move my shear, but the more I can move this, the easier it is at the same time. Um, it, I, I'm not a pro at this. I, uh, these are just little, this is like what I've learned that works for me. Um, if you've got a different way, by all means, if it works, then great. Um, again, I'm just, I keep re I keep doing this, reopen, this, reopen, this, reopen is, is kind of my motion. And then I'm using my left hand as my, my pivot to move around every little piece that I, so it's almost like my shears are staying stable. You can see I'm not, the point of my shears are staying in the same direction. Um, and I'm moving the paper. And it's, and it's almost kind of like, think of this like the cricket, how the cricket moves back and forth, up and down. Um, and that, that um, blade, cutting blade doesn't have a whole lot of movement to it sometimes. Th that's why it's using that as the pivot point as the shears do the work. Okay, so now last little piece here. Once you get it down, I'll be honest, it doesn't, it, it, it's actually pretty easy. Um, it used to stress me out and I would just avoid any fussy cutting at all possible, even just cutting fussy cutting out like around sentiments. I was like, nope, I'm either going to cut straight lines around it or it's got to have a die cut for it because I'm not fussy cutting it because I'm horrible at it. All right, there you go. And if I'm coloring this, I'm not too concerned. Sometimes I got little white pieces. I'm not too concerned about like getting those little pieces off every time because I'm coloring this anyway and it'll blend in, okay? All right, let's get coloring. One other thing I wanted to point out is on this stem and this leaf, you'll see this little leaf came over that like this. I cut through it. That was too much. It didn't leave enough for, to keep this leaf together. Um, you could cut this out and then cut out a whole other leaf and then cut this one so you have another, you know, three different leaves to make this one. I didn't do that. Um, I tried to cut into this a little bit to at least round that out so it shows when I pop it up on a dimensional. Um, all right. Let's um, clear this out. Let's get some coloring. I'm gonna throw down um, a piece of scratch paper here so that you can kind of see this a little bit better. Um, let's do our leaves first, okay? I'm gonna color one, I'll color second, speed through the second one um, since it's the same kind of concept. Okay, guess what? I'm using the same concept. I'm using my three colors from Catherine Pooler, Martini, Lime Ricky, and Deck the Halls. Um, before I do that, I am gonna throw down a little yellow. Rather than use yellow ink, I'm gonna use my colored yellow colored pencil. I am just randomly throwing some yellow down to get some little brightness in here. Okay, on this stamp, this is a leaf, this is a bud. So it took me a couple times of coloring this to realize, oh, that's not a leaf. That's why it looks funny. It's actually a bud. Um, all right, no rhyme or reason. I just threw some yellow, so I had a little background in there. I'm working light to dark again, so I'm going to use my martini. I don't need a ton of color on these, so tap off, and I'm just get that color on there. Because this is going to layer up my three colors. So I'm tapping this in because I'm going to try to avoid that. You can tape that off if you want. Um, avoid that bud because we'll throw the color onto that bud when we get there. Okay, so I got my, my martini on all of these. We will move on to my uh, Lime Ricky. This one's super bright, so the, it pops on a lot 
heavier on these so I'm giving it kind of a light swipe you can kind of see as using a col it, colored pencils are wax right so the ink it's almost like embossing um, or, or heat emboss resist um, you can see that yellow and I'll move this up closer to the camera here in a second um, resist the ink so that is as my highlight um, the more I color over it the more it'll blend in but I'm using it as my highlight so if you want to be strategic on how you put it down I don't worry about it because I feel like the more random I am the more natural it looks I try not to be too like particular about it Yes, your fingertips are probably going to get inky on this one. Okay, last one. This one I will use more of a brushing motion because I want to use the dark, my deck the halls, as my low light. So this one, I kind of work off the edge because I want some of that dark to work off of the edge of the card. So it almost low lights that's that side of it. Same, it's the same concept like when I try to do the darker edge on the stencil, essentially, if that if that helps give you a, a better visual. I don't know, but I don't know about you guys. You know, I'm a visual person. I watch something. Um, I'm not gonna write, I can't write the instructions down. I've got to do I gotta do it. Um, just to, to to see it, to feel it. To, uh, it's just ex hairdresser in me. It's like doing hair. You got to feel the hair, and you got to like see it in person and how to do it. And um, it's probably the artist in us too, I suppose, right? Um, all right, last little stem here for this one. Okay, let me just move this closer to the camera so you can see hopefully the camera's picking up you can see the my yellow colored pencil in there how it just resisted um that's it's small things like this i'll tend to use a colored pencil like that if that's especially leaves and things because then it just is my natural highlight um i could keep coloring over it. it'll darken it if it's a little too light for you go right ahead um and then there's the other one with the bud that will color here in just a second so there's my leaves and my stem all right, moving on. Um, let's get rid of our greens. We are done with our greens for this um, flower. And we're going to use our um, purple. I want to do purple. These are irises, bearded iris, Siberian iris. Um, Google them. There are tons and tons of colors. Um, these are one of my all-time favorite flowers, to be honest. Back in Minnesota, before we moved down here to Georgia, um, I had amazing amazing flower beds i had a whole flower bed of irises um, i had purple i had peach i had uh, this creamy colored one i had uh iranian um irises over 100 year iranian irises from our neighbor um, and his family um so i'm gonna do purple one of my favorite ones favorite color of these darker around the edge they get lighter in the middle with a, the yellow stamen in the middle so i'm gonna color this i'm using my colored pencil I'm gonna color this yellow stamen. I'm gonna color the little piece behind it just to give it a little like highlight. So it pops just a little bit better. Okay. That's all I've done with my colored pencil so far. All right. Now I'm going to use just a tiny bit. Now I'm talking a tiny bit of flirty fuchsia on this to give it a little bright background before I go deep on the grape crush. Okay. So let me load off my brush now i very very light hand i'm tapping almost all of this off and i'm just going to work from that outer edge i'm super light hand but this flirty fuchsia is bright and i just want this bright to to back up my dark that's going to go on it i'm working towards the middle but I, i'm not i don't i want that middle to stay light I want that as my natural highlight on this flower because they tend to be lighter in the middle. Are there ones with the dark in the middle and the light on the edge? There are. Google Google Iris. You're going to come up with 
tons of color combinations, which again is why I love this stamp. Um, I There are so many color combinations I could do with this. Um, I could color the middle, leave the edges white. I could just do the edges and leave it. So like this, for example, on this side, are there, there are irises? There's some blue ones, I think, light blue ones I saw with just the edges. Everything else is white, but blue on the edge. Um, so from a ease standpoint for, for us as artists and card makers, there's so many combinations. There's so many, I mean, there's more, you know, harder ones. There are um, easy ones that you could fussy cut this, throw a little color around the edge like this and be done. Um, so you've got lots of options with this stamp which is what I, especially the iris because of the color combinations you can do. Okay, there we go. This is all I wanna do with my Flirty Fuchsia. Now, could I leave this like this? Heck yeah, I could, um, because there, there's colors like this. I could, I want a deeper purple one though, because I want that dark, deep, hus uh, bearded iris, purple iris one. Um, so, but I'm using this as my, my highlight background. All right, let me just get this out of my way. All right, let's use some Grape Crush. Now again, this one is heavily pigmented and deep in color, so light, light hand on this. Start at my edge. Uh, where's my white piece of paper so I can show you? Um, all right, here's another scrap. Hopefully you can see this against the scrap. Light hand, super light hand because I'm going to let the ink do the work on this one. I'm not even push, I'm, I'm, I'm just holding the brush is all I'm doing and moving my arm and hand. No pressure, because I just want a natural dark to light highlight. Think of it this way. These are somewhat delicate flowers and you just delicate coloring on this. Let the ink build onto itself to get the, what you want for a natural looking flower on this. No pressure. Hopefully this is helpful. Um, I posted this card um, a couple days ago um, as one of the cards that I did. I think I did 40 cards to redo in the in the um, display booth and stuff for uh, the next show coming up for Anthony, um, for Anthony's Paper Craft. And um, I'll post all the other ones here one at a time, but I guess there were a lot of comments on it on uh, people inquiring, how do you do that? What's the techniques behind it? So here we are showing you how to do this card. Um, it is a, way less complicated than, than it looks. Okay, you can kind of see, I want to show you kind of, I'm going to go around probably one more time. I'm letting that color build, but look at that flirty fuchsia still popping through around my, my grape crush. I want to bring that grape crush in just a tiny bit further. So I'm going to work in towards that middle, extremely light, because I don't want my white to go away. That white in the middle is my natural highlight that I'm making work on this card. So it's almost like my my dark in the middle, my white, or my, excuse me, my white in the middle, my dark on the edge are the two things that are working here. So back to the stencils, um, before I, I took a little pause to do all my fussy cutting, um, yeah, I've got to invest in some of these layering flower stencils. Um, just, I'm, I'm discovering, and which, again, kind of surprising myself um, that I'm really digging the flowers. I'm really digging the combinations you can do with flowers. Um, I, I bought some um, Tim Holtz uh, watercolor pencils. I'm about to buy a set of watercolors because I am dig. I am. I'm not an artist, but I. I like to do arts and crafts as a kid and, and, and you know, till now 50 years old. Um, but um, I, I'm not a trained artist, but I'm loving playing with the watercolors and the flowers and the shadowing and like this kind of stuff. Like this, I would now, I'd love to do this. I'm gonna have to try this in a colored watercolor pencil or watercolor and do the edges and blend it in and leave it fade to the middle. Um, I'm just having fun with all this flower shading and stuff. 
I am actually, I think, digging where this is right about now. That's it. I mean, two colors. I used my Flirty Fuchsia, real light, 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 light hand just to get that little background pop behind it. Grape Crush, my goal with this Grape Crush was just to get it on the edge of the card and then start pulling it in over that Flirty Fuchsia to get my natural highlight. And I'm gonna stop there, because it's one of those you gotta learn when to stop and uh, you go too far and uh, I wish I would've done, like, I'm gonna stop here. Um, so there is my first flower. Um, I'm going to color this other flower, same idea, I'm going to use my sparkling berry and uh, where did it go ahead, uh, my other one, be mine I think, um, for my, my background, and I'll speed this up as I do this second flower, it's the same exact concept, I just see a different color because we decided to do that second second card here today. Um, so I will, um, I will be quiet, we will speed through this second flower, and uh, we'll come back here to... Um, Put these together. All right, let's do this. Okay, we are back. We are colored and we are back, back, back. Okay, let's start with my purple one first because that was the original flower I was starting with uh, before we um, side-lighted and went pink, all right? I'm gonna separate these out. Um, I wanted just to point out, I forgot we forgot to color our buds, so I colored both buds here while we were uh, in fast forward. Um, so here are my three, my four pieces now for my um, purple iris. Purple was gonna go on this yellow. And let me wipe my surface here just to make sure. This is the other thing. <laughs> Let's just take some time while we craft to clean our surface so that we don't get, well, <coughs> excuse me, almost done with the project and then uh, smear it, right? This is one of those like, Sean is taking his time, learning by mistakes. Um, sometimes we're like, okay, I'm just almost done. It's fine, it's fine, I won't mess up. And you mess up. So, all right, let's, my concept now of cutting these out was to get this 3D kind of effect on my card and have these at different layers as this. So I'm gonna triple pop this up, double pop and single pop, so that I get uh, leaves single, stem comes up, and then the iris comes up even further on top of this card. So I'm going to uh, throw some uh, dimensionals on these, pop this on here, um, I'll do the second one the same exact way, um, and then we'll we'll f come back, mat these, throw these on a card, and uh, bada bing, bada boom, you've got two cards, super incredibly easy, with uh, the Iris Stamp by Anthony's Papercraft. So, I'm going to put us on fast forward here again, dimensionals, pop these up. I'm going to say this again, this is going to be one two layers, three layers up, so I get this layered effect on this iris, so it has this 3D kind of look. All right, let's do it.
Okay, welcome back. A little fussy on the um, adding some of the dimensionals on these. Um, I have these really super thin, <coughs> pardon me, uh, dimensionals to go in the back of these, so it takes a little bit. So what I've done, I had really thin dimensionals on the back here, one layer. Thin dimensionals, two layers. I did two square layers here because the squares are thicker than these little thin strips. Um, so it just gives it three different layers of this flower. Hopefully the camera is picking that up, that you can see that. Let's throw these on some background and uh, call them a card. Okay, let's throw these. So I wanted to show this to you too. Um, here was our dimensions that we used today. Um, if you check out my videos, I have a video on making these templates that I use every single time I make a card, every single day. Um, I love them. I got them off of uh, somebody else's YouTube. I just did more measurements. I went in eighth inch measurements. Um, and so I have them all on this ring for my mats. And so I decided to do five inch by three and three quarters for our top card layer. I am doing two layers to this card. So my mat, back mat is going to be black, five and three eighths by five and one eighth. And then my layer on top of that is going to be five and one fourth by four inches. All right. So let's layer these together. So we're going to have it like so, purple and, uh, wait, no, we did yellow. Oh, no, purple and then the yellow and the blue. Okay. So we will layer these up. Okay, I'm back. Little glue trouble here. Uh, too liquidy. Then my my uh, tip was clogged here on the on the glue. Hopefully, you guys got some ideas today on how to use some of these more intricate type stamps um, and just see something in a different light. Uh, get those stencils out. Um, use that stuff that's just sitting there. Um, and try to think of some different way to use it. Um, again, I like backgrounds. I like texture on my backgrounds. That's where I got these different layers to pop up and highlight and hopefully showcase this iris stamp. Um, feel free to check out Anthony's Paper Crafts at anthonyspapercraft.com. I will put the link in the comments. Um, the iris stamp is up there. The round stencil um, is in there and you can kind of see I just did a little light black I didn't want a whole lot of black showing but just enough to kind of give me another another layer on that um, the round circle stencil is in there um, again we've used that circle two in two different ways similar look these could pair together these could definitely pair together if you were making a set of stamp or a set of cards um, and give a couple different looks, but using the same kind of, you know, quote unquote concept and um, style and look to the card, um, this would work. You know, you've got two different looks out of out of the same stamp and the same stencil set. So, um, and then if you've got any other background stencils, you can pair with this. Um, Again, mine are just um, non-branded off of Amazon that I have on, on Stash right now. Um, I will definitely be investing in some flowered layer stamps. I can, I can tell you that. All right. I don't know um, if any of you make stamps and send them or, or, or what you do. Um, I sell them. I, I um, send them as well but I always brand them on the back. So brand it and layer these up. I grabbed one of each card so uh, so that you can just see that these could definitely be used on um, either direction, on an A2 uh, side fold or, or top fold. This is one of my favorite flowers. I absolutely love how these turned out. Hopefully you guys do too. Here are our two 
cards. Great Easter cards as well. So here you go. I will show these on my forward face camera too so you can kind of see it just a little bit better. Hope you like them. Let's uh, wrap this up. All right. There are our cards. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I absolutely love making these cards. I realized I had on my flower shirt today, which probably went with our theme of flowers today. Um, so check out Anthony's Papercraft at anthonyspapercraft.com. Check out this iris stamp and his circle stencil um, is what we use today on this card. Um, I know when I posted this, everyone was kind of inquiring how did I make it, basically technique behind it. So hopefully you were able to see. Um, I know I said at the beginning I might make two and then five seconds in, I'm like, oh, we're making two cards. So uh, we did, we made two. So this was the original. Um, see if the camera will focus on that um, with the circle, st uh, stencil then I decided to make the reverse of that so um, I love this card like I really like how this one turned out very wallpapery kind of it I don't know I just really like it um, hopefully you like this do me a huge favor if you like what I'm showing you on YouTube and like my content love my cards hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, and hit that little bell and get notified when my next video comes up. I have a video that comes out every Monday, uh, which is Manly Made Minutes Monday Moments, where I share tips, tricks, and helpful hints on anything and everything that I do. Um, I know I mentioned earlier we might do the Tim Holtz, the, the glass mat here, and, and some tips on that coming up. Um, and then I try to post at least once a week with another video of a card. So. Would love to have you uh, like my channel and uh, watch my future videos. So appreciate you all. I appreciate you all sharing your stuff with me because I watch a ton of your videos. And uh, until next time, I'll see you then.